Hey, hey good morning, everybody. Um, appreciate you taking some time to be with us and talk a little NFL draft, Steelers draft prep, and so on and so forth. You know, every time at this time of year, I always like to first off thank my staff, my scouts, uh, our help um, for all the work that they've done throughout the fall and, of course, under the situation that they've worked through. Coach Tomlin and his staff, the same type of thing. It's been it's been different, but it's been good. Bob McCartney with his video group, uh, Scott Phelps with his IT group, John Norwig doing all the medical work uh, with, with his trainers and our doctors, of course, Bert and his group, and Jack Kearney and the security group. Um, everybody did a remarkable job under the circumstances, and I can't, you know, appreciate those folks enough. Uh, for what everybody did. One guy I'd like to point out from the National Football League who had a really huge job in trying to pull this off, and he's still working at it, is Ken Fiore, the, the vice president of player personnel. Um, you know, when this all came down, the virtual draft, uh, Kenny had a pool and is continuing to pull all of us together. And uh, he's done an awesome job in, in being able to try to get this thing uh, off the ground and, and run as flawless as it can be. So again, Kenny, thank you. Uh, really, the prep the prep has been great. Uh, we have absolutely no complaints. It's been different. Um, we had three solid weeks of meetings with the with the coaches and the scouts. Uh, we put our board together. Um, we're not sitting in a room, but we all can see a board, and and it's been great. No problems whatsoever. And I think moving forward, we're all going to learn from this. Uh, I think we're going to find ways, not only in football, but in, in real life, where you know we're all going to be a little more efficient at what we do. Um, it was different. There's no question about it. Coach Tomlin and myself, we got to one pro day. We were at Clemson. And, of course, after that, things got shut down. A couple of our uh, scouts were at a few other pro days before things got shut down. But... Uh, minimal minimal uh, participation, obviously, with pro days. Uh, coming out of that, it, it will be a little bit different because um, our totals indicate that we got 74 players that we will not have a 40-yard dash on. Uh, we got 76 players that will have incomplete physicals because they weren't able to go back for uh, the makeup physicals that they would do coming out of a combine if they had still had some injuries healing. Uh, we, Coach Tomlin and I have interviewed 125 players, either at the Senior Bowl, at the Combine, or through uh, the FaceTime calls, which I think we ended up doing about 37 uh, of those over the last three weeks. Um, all, all said, you know, we still think the depth of this draft is good. Uh, we think we're going to get all six of our players from 140. And, you know, we're going to get some that will start, some that will compete as starters, some that will back up, and some that will compete with our backups. And really, uh, with that, I'll uh, give it over to Coach, and then we can open it up for questions. Coach? You know, uh, not a lot to add. I'll say this. Um, although the, the, uh, the procedure or the process has been different, uh, as I sit here today, I still have the same level of preparedness and comfort. Uh, that I normally have going into a draft week. Um, areas where we may be lacking, uh, we, we're probably stronger than some other areas. I feel really good uh, from a preparedness standpoint in terms of the tape uh, and, and, you know, the value that we place and I place on the tape. I had a real, real good opportunity to really delve into that, uh, probably more so uh, than we do when we get a, when we're traveling a bunch. Uh, we do glean a lot of information from the face-to-face -face opportunities uh, with the young people and being on their campuses. Uh, but as Kevin mentioned, the, the calls and so forth uh, been, have been very productive for us. Um, we're not worried about how or why this is different. Um, it's the same for all the people that we compete against and we're in this process with. Uh, so from that standpoint, it's fair. Uh, we're excited about uh, getting into the work that we have in front of us this week. It has been a really good process. It's been fun to kind of uh, adjust and, and, and find ways to be productive. Uh, one of the things that I think um, that was most significant about this process that Kevin did mention was once the, the pro days got shut down, we almost immediately started our meetings. 
And so there was never a sense or a feeling of being rushed through the developmental process. And uh, we were able to adjust to the unusual circumstances with a significant amount of time uh, that Kevin allowed it for, for the meeting element of the process. So um, we're thankful for that. And it's been a good process. And with that, we'll open it up to questions. All right, guys, this is Bert again. Just a reminder, uh, please mute yourself uh, if you're not uh, called on to ask a question. As soon as you ask your question, uh, please re-mute yourself. And there is no live streaming of the call. We will have everything available afterwards. So first question, Jerry Dulac. Jerry Dulac, you want to go ahead with your uh, question at this point in time? Yeah, like, um, I, given some of the struggles you had uh, late last season, or certainly the second half of the season, um, it, is, it, is it fair to say that offense would be a high priority in this draft for you guys? Uh, I'm sorry, Jerry, who was that directed to? Oh, to, to Mike, but it's fine if you want to chime in too, Kev. No. No, you know, um, we, we have some positional needs, no doubt, um, but – you know, as we always do, man, we're going to uh, let the development do our work for us. Uh, we put a lot of effort into this development. Uh, there are a lot of good players on both sides of the ball. Uh, we can utilize good players on both sides of the ball and in special teams. Uh, we're going to come out of this thing with the guys that we need, uh, no doubt. Um, our shared history together gives me that comfort, uh, and we'll get our needs addressed on offense, defense, and special teams. You know, the only thing I would add to that, uh, Jerry, is, you know, uh, you referenced the back end of the season. And um, what I'm going to reference is the front end of this season with the assumption that we're going to have a Ben Roethlisberger available. And, you know, when you have that, that caliber quarterback available, uh, everybody's play picks up. So I, I'm going to look forward to having Ben in the mix and seeing how the rest of the group responds with him. And we'll factor that into all the thinking we have as we move forward into the draft. Okay. Thank you, guys. Brooke, you are up next. Brooke Pryor from ESPN.com. Go ahead, Brooke. Hey, guys. A couple of mock drafts have had the Steelers taking a quarterback with that first pick. I'm just curious how closely you guys have evaluated this class of quarterbacks and if you anticipate adding one, whether it's through the draft or free agency or, or afterward. Um, and what kind of impact can Matt Canada have in developing some of the younger quarterbacks you have on the roster? I'll take the first part of that, Brooke. I mean, we look at every position no differently than any other given year. And, you know, whether we're picking first or 32nd or not picking, uh, we evaluate the whole board by position. So as the property stack it, so we got a good feel for those guys. And there's several players in that group that are going to be um, future starters, possible pro bowlers, there's some nice backups. And if, you know, any pick makes sense at any time, um, then we'll, we'll, of course we'll make those picks. But uh, we've stated before, I've just stated on the last question, we're very, um, you, you feel good about number seven, Ben coming back. Um, we know what we have in Mason and we, you know, we'll see where we go, but um Again, we'll be prepared for any any position, regardless of who we have on our current team. I'll let Coach address the uh, back part of that about Matt. Yeah, we're excited about uh, bringing Matt and and Ike Hilliard into the fold. You know, new coaches on our staff. Um, Matt's gonna get an opportunity to work hand in hand, obviously, with all the quarterbacks um, and, and help them in their growth and development and our readiness for the season. But not only that, man, he's gonna bring some fresh ideas to us. Uh, as a coach collective and, and, and probably bring uh, some schematic ideas as well. Um, that's all part of the process of kind of team development and I'm excited about getting started with that and in, in whatever form we get started that with that here in, in, in a week or so on the 27th when we start our off-season program. Thanks, guys. Okay, next. Just a reminder, please mute yourself if you are not uh, asking a question. Just a reminder on that end. Uh, and next up, uh, Trev Pursuta, Mike Pursuta, WDVE, go ahead. Kevin, this is for you, Mike, if you want to chime in. I'd certainly like to hear your thoughts as well. But I'm curious, Kevin, when you're looking for multiple positions, how do you weigh best player available at the time versus one position or another that might be especially deep in a given draft? In other words, well, we like, we like player X here, but there are way more position players at 
position Y, and we could probably get that in a subsequent round. What's what's the dynamic involved round around? Yeah, I mean, it's all relative, Mike. I mean, you, we can always say this player is available, um, but there's, you know, there's several more that we may get uh, down the road. We better look at another position first. And if the other position without the depth and the player is equal, of course you take you take the player with the less depth at that appropriate time. But um, you're never going to reach down into a group only because there's there's only six that may help you, and the other group has 12. If the group that has 12, his player, that player is significantly better, you take him. If not, you're going to make a mistake. Okay, next up, uh, Mark Caboli from The Athletic. Mark, go ahead. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Kevin, can you walk us through basically what's going to happen this weekend in the dynamics of uh, the <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to be on the phone? Is it going to be you, Mike, Art? Is there Zoom meetings? How, how are you going to come to the, the final decision? Could you just walk us through how that all is going to happen? Yeah, you know what, Mark? I could probably do that better in about um, three hours because we actually have an NFL uh, walkthrough draft at 1 o'clock today. Uh, and, and we've been meeting about it, talking about it. And again, Scott Felch and his group uh, has done a lot to help us be able to manage this but we're actually going through that later this afternoon uh, we have our room set up for the Steelers I mean coach Tomlin myself and Art Rooney and Omar Khan uh, will be visible to each other because Omar would be involved in the drafts and basically what we have available to us is if we were sitting in the room together all the uh, coaches and scouts We'll have access to every conversation going on via different lines. Uh, the coach and myself and Art and, and then Omar, if we get into trade talks, um, we can share a conversation as if we're sitting there. So we, we have it set up internally. Again, Scott Phelps and his group were awesome in doing this. Uh, we each have the draft room set up in our homes. Um, and then we'll work from that. The interaction with the league, again, we have that first dress rehearsal today, and I'll know more about that myself at about 3 o'clock. Okay, next question uh, from Joe Rutter at the Trib. Joe, go ahead. Yeah, for both of you guys, what do you expect? What's Thursday going to be like, not having a pick? How do you guys uh, anticipate you know, going through that process? I'll let you start with that one, Coach. You know, uh, uh, it's going to be a spectator's view. Um, but, you know, it's really a, a good opportunity for us to, you know, get comfortable with the organization of this, of all of this in terms of how uh, the draft is unfolding and, and how communication uh, happens and trades and, and things of that nature. Um, I, I think uh, there's some, you know, unintended consequences or benefits uh, of not having a first pick from that perspective. Um, and to be quite honest with you, I'm not fretting at all about not having a first pick. That first pick is Mika Fitzpatrick, and we've already benefited from from, from his presence and, and look forward to continuing to do so. Okay, next up, uh, Rich Walsh from KDKA TV. Rich, go ahead. Okay, moving right along, Dale Lawley from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Dale, go ahead. Hey, guys, uh, either one of you can, I guess, mention this or talk about this, but maybe uh, Mike might be better suited for it. Typically, by this time in the in the process, you've had the guys in the building um, for, for the first part of OTAs. Um, you've had players that had off-season surgeries, other things like that. How are you handling not – being able to see these guys on a regular basis. Are you staying in contact with players who've, who've had those kind of issues and, and kind of keeping track of them throughout this whole process? To be honest with you, um, this process in terms of our ability to interact with our current roster um, in a formal way would be no different. Um, our off-season program was scheduled to start today. Um, 
Now we're preliminarily scheduled to have a virtual off season start on the 27th. So today would have been the first official function, obviously, with the guys in the building. Now, that being said, obviously, guys uh, under normal circumstances are in and out of the building, getting workouts in an informal way. Um, but today would have actually been the first day for us to gather um, in a formal way in terms of uh, the off-season program and, 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 and interacting with players um, in, in a professional way. So um, can't say that we've missed a lot. Can't say that this process has changed information gathering from that perspective because uh, every year the calendar is different. And this year, because of how the draft fell um, in relation to the large calendar, there wasn't a lot of an opportunity for that, that interaction or that analysis of the current roster prior to draft weekend. Okay, next up, uh, Jeff Hathorne, 93.7 The Fan. Jeff, go ahead. Hey guys, for either of you, um, Mike, you had mentioned a lot of tape that you had watched. Do you feel like you have a better idea or how different is the idea you have of these players because you've watched more tape than more in person or more numbers? You know, I don't know that I have more exposure to more players. I think I've just watched more tape on the same number of players that I usually watch um, because we're quarantined and so forth. Um, I've had opportunities to come back and, you know, take a look at another game or two on a guy that we're discussing. Um, you know, the video is just at my fingertips and, you know, through the isolation, it's just provided a lot of opportunities to take a deeper dive. And so uh, there's additional comfort from that perspective. Jeff, Thank and you. I might add to that, um, you know, in, in a normal season or a normal draft preparation, Coach and I may be at a pro day and, and our scouts are working on uh, meetings of, of the more later picks. Um, but right now, I mean, Coach and I were on every call and every, every meeting um, more so than we've been in the past with the lower round guys. And, you know, I think personally I feel better knowing more about the, the draft, or the later picks and the free agent types than I did. And, of course, we all feel comfortable what we know about the uh, – the higher rated guys. All right. Thanks. Well, Albie Oxenreiter from uh, WPXI TV. Albie, go ahead. All right. Moving right along, Aditi from NFL Network. Aditi, go ahead. Hi, gentlemen. You uh, mentioned that there were 74 players that have incomplete physicals or 76 players that have incomplete physicals and other 74 guys that there are some unknowns about. So then what do you do about that? Are all those guys just off of your board or do you weigh the unknowns differently? No, dude. I mean, look, all teams are in the same boat. Um, none of us have that information um, because players didn't have pro days, so we couldn't – we couldn't get 40 times and um, nobody got the, the extra information of the rechecks on the physicals because, you know, the, the physicals had to be postponed. So what we're relying on, you know, we're relying on what we see on film as a, uh, as what we think a player can run. Uh, we do more background and talk to their strength coaches. Um, there's been several videos sent out by agents uh, throughout the spring. And, you know, we assigned our scouts to watch those videos. You're not going to time anybody off a video because, A, you don't know what the surface is, what the wind is, how much the player weighs. Um, but what we do say, if we think a player is 4 or 5 and you watch the video and he looks like he's running 4-6-5, uh, make that note. If we think he's 4 or 5 and it looks like he's running 4-4, four, 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 make that note. And again, John Norwig and our team doctors, Dr. Bradley, Dr. Yates, uh, they've been awesome in following up uh, with phone calls and verifying as much information as they can medically, um, either talking to the player, talking to the team doctor that did the, or the doctors that did the surgeries, talking to trainers, uh, just making decisions as best we can with the information we got. But as we said from all from the beginning of this whole process, we're no different than any of the other 31 teams, so we just got to make the most of it. 
Okay, guys, when you're asking a question, just make sure to unmute your line and then mute it again afterwards. Next up is Andrew Stocky from WTAE TV. Andrew, go ahead. Sure, thank you. Uh, Mike, Kevin, uh, good to talk to you. Um, you kind of talked about the fact you'll be going through the, the mock draft procedure this afternoon. Are there any concerns when it comes to making a trade, given the fact you're all in different locations? Uh, I'm guessing you still have 15 minutes. Do you worry that you may not have enough time to, if you want to make a move, be able to do it in time? Uh, again, Andrew, I think we'll find that out this afternoon um, because part of the, the mock the mock that we do today, it's, it's really just like a um, – it's just a drill within the NFL, with the NFL working such things as you mentioned. Um, where I, I believe that we're all going to be asked to pull off a trade and to communicate with uh, a team, get that communication into the league. And uh, I'm assuming we're doing it today so as to if any problems pop up, uh, that the league can address it and say, okay, we got we got till Thursday to work with this. So, um, Again, Ken Fury and his group has been awesome in trying to, to iron out as many of these details as we can. And uh, we'll know more again this afternoon. Did we talk about the, the possibility of what ifs? Sure. And um, again, Ken and his group, and I think each team um, will try it today. It's not going to be a, you know, it's going to be a two hour uh, practice. And I, I, I'm sure we'll feel comfortable coming out of it because if there's things that need to be addressed, um, we'll get it taken care of. Okay, next up, Ed Bouchette from The Athletic. Ed, go ahead. Well, as, um, you weren't very good at running the ball last year, and there were big reasons for that, Ben not being there. Uh, even assuming he's coming back, how important is it for you to uh, find a running back in this draft? You know, like we mentioned earlier, um, we got a lot of needs, man. There's some top quality backs in this draft that could help us, uh, but there are some, also some other, some other positional guys that could help us. Uh, we'll let the development do the work for us. If we get an opportunity to add a back that can that can bring some things to our to our current pool, then we'll be excited about that. Uh, we have every intention of running the ball uh, better in 2020 than we did in 2019, whether we add that back or no. And uh, that's just being bluntly honest with you, Ed. And to add to that, um, I know that starting the season we'll have a healthy James Conner, and we got some other young backs that are all that have all been contributors in the past, and there's no reason that they still can't be uh, contributors um, when healthy. And you know, I always go back to James Conner had acute injuries in 2019. Uh, in 2018, he avoided that and put up a Pro Bowl season. So he's still a young, ascending player. Uh, when healthy, he's an NFL Pro Bowl player. So, um, again, that's a hope that, you know, I know James will enter the season healthy, but, you know, can we complement it? We'll see. But I, I'm not going in thinking we don't have a starter-capable runner because I know James Conner is. <laughs> Okay, next up, Aubrey Bruce from the Sentinel. Aubrey, go ahead. Okay, mute or moving right along. Uh, make sure to mute and unmute your lines here. Moving right along, Jacob Klinger from Penn Live. Jacob, go ahead. All right, next up, Ray Fittipaldo with the PG. Ray, go ahead with your question. Uh, Kevin, with the uh, new CBA, you have the extra roster spots in coming years. I'm just wondering if um, that's going to change your draft strategy at all. Um, maybe different types of players that could fit into your roster that maybe you didn't want to use the draft pick on in the past. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll always look at, at what's coming down the road. I think one thing that we've acknowledged this year with the ability to address uh, the extra offensive linemen on game day, um, that's going to help the center uh, type player because in the past, if you couldn't play two positions, it was hard to get a jersey on game day. And it's something we've talked about and, you know, a lot of times when you're talking about offensive linemen, we look at position flexibility and the ability to play uh, more than one spot. But
But now, because we will be able to address that extra offensive lineman, I think that changes our thinking. Um, and then we'll adjust as, as the different rules uh, come into play over time. Coach, anything? No, no, nothing to add. I'll just expand on that, that center discussion. You know, the backup center, particularly the backup center only, uh, they're going to be more global opportunities for employment and uh, participation and availability for games uh, because of the rule. Okay, next up, Tim Benz from uh, the Trib. Tim, go ahead with your question. Uh, for Kevin and Mike on wide receivers. Uh, Kevin, were you able to glean the depth of talent that might have been there before the shutdown happened? Were you able to get enough of a sense of how deep of talent this pool is for receivers and Mike, uh, your depth chart at wide receiver, is it too stocked right now that a first round draft choice, excuse me, a second round draft choice, your first draft choice uh, would have a tough time getting into the mix and uh, helping out this year's team because of the pass catching options you might have. Uh, I'll take the first part. That's a nice way to sneak in two questions, Tim. I like that. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> but, you know, fortunately, the, uh, the wide receiver group, um, when I talked about players that didn't run 40s, uh, the majority of the wide receivers did uh, either run at their uh, at the combine or the, the pro days that we were able to get done before the shutdown. So we do feel good about uh, that group. It's a, it is a deep group. Um, there's some there's some dynamic players. There's some nice depth guys. There's some slot types. There's some big outside guys. So it, it's a nice group, and I feel good about it. Um, you know, from an evaluation standpoint, probably as we feel as good about that position as we do any other. And from a depth and competition standpoint, man, I'm always excited about adding talent to our team, uh, particularly with this wide receiver pool. I think. Um, Kevin would agree, man, in recent years, it's been interesting to watch um, the level of development of receivers and, and corners specifically from a draft standpoint. I think it's kind of reflective of the development of seven-on-seven seven, uh, in a year-round skill development that's now permeates our game at the high school level. I think these guys are just coming in with a higher level of preparedness, and I think that allows them from a skill standpoint uh, to, to maybe ascend and, and be helpful to us at an early stage. All right, guys, a couple more here. Uh, next up is Dejan from uh, DK Pittsburgh Sports. Go ahead. Both of you, Kevin, you mentioned earlier uh, on that you felt that there could be positives that could be called from this experience that you guys are going through uh, in draft preparation. I'm hoping you can expand on that a little bit because uh, – I'm wondering also if that means maybe an increased reliance on analytics or, or what exactly did you mean by that? What, what are the ways that you're trying to overcome uh, some of the shortcomings that this situation creates? Well, Dan, you know, I'm, all, I'm usually optimistic and I try to look for positives within a situation. And not only the football world has been challenged, but, you know, the whole world has been challenged, life in general, and how do we go about things and priorities and those types of things. But I, I, what I was referencing is, um, you know, when this, when we got shut down, as coach mentioned, we went right into a meeting phase. And uh, again, with through our IT people and our video people, we were able to do this in a much more efficient um, manner. You know, we got it. Uh, I think we're as thorough as we can be with as much information, but maybe we look at it and do it in a different manner. You know, do I have to fly the scouts in in February for preliminary meetings, and why can't we just do those via conference like we just did? Is there a more efficient way rather than th uh, flying in 30 players for a uh, to spend a day with you? Um, we get them on the phone, and for 20 minutes, we can talk to them and get a lot of the same details we might have had had we spent a day with them. Of course, you can't. You can watch film with them via FaceTime. We chose not to do that. We just want to meet the player if we haven't met them. So I, I think you know, like I said, we got 37 visits done uh, in a much more efficient manner and in cost-efficient manner than we did uh, or have in the past from having to fly people. The analytic part, you know, the analytic part will continue to grow, 
And, you know, we have two young men um, that help us, you know, in our, in our, in our scouting staff, uh, Tosin and Jay, and they do awesome work and they provide information. And we use that information to supplement our scouting information and, you know, maybe answer some questions that we have if we're looking for tiebreaker type things. So I, I think all of that will continue. Uh, I know that the meetings were efficient. The meetings were timely. Uh, we got it done. And as you know, I, and I think business in general and everybody uh, that's been obviously affected by this will have a different way to look at things. And I think that there will be, you know, there will be plenty of positives that come out of this whenever it all um, comes to be. Okay. I think there's uh, enough time for two more. Uh, next up is Anna Harner from WPXI, new to Pittsburgh, new Pittsburgh sports reporter for WPXI. Jenna, welcome to Pittsburgh and go ahead. Thank you so much, guys. This question is for both of you. What is the biggest challenge in your mind with just the unusual nature of this year's draft? Um, well, you know, I, I think we've talked about those, those challenges, but they're not unique to us. So I, I think, I hope that we've met those challenges. Um, the meetings were different. Again, we don't have as much information as we've had, but going back to the very, when this thing first started, um, I, I reminded our scouts that the best draft in NFL history happened not not during a, a pandemic but it happened in an era when the group art rooney jr bill nunn dick haley um they trusted their information so they were able to do it there's no reason why we can't so i don't i really don't view it as challenging it's different but the challenge um i welcome the challenge and hopefully we can meet it coach yeah, I, I think I'm beyond um, worry regarding uh, the process of drafting. And, and I guess my focus now is, is on, um, you know, the, the, the welcoming and the development of the guys that we're going to draft and what that's going to look like or, or not look like. Um, you know, drafting is just the beginning of the process, man, how we develop these men. Uh, not only as players, but into our team in this community um, is something that we take personal pride in uh, and work very hard at. And um, so these present circumstances are going to change the look of that. Um, and so, you know, um, my, my, my attention is probably moving in that direction in terms of what rookie orientation looks like and, and how do we get to know these young men and help them grow and develop under present circumstances. But, um, that's a that's a few days away. Uh, we got to draft them and acquire them first, and uh, I'm comfortable uh, with, with the direction that we're headed in terms of that. 